now with our good buddy Frank Nobolo. You'll see him all weekend on CBS, Golf Channel 2. Always says hello during these big golf events. He's at Augusta, and we have a conversation. Frank, nice to talk. How are you, pal? Okay? Chris, yeah, this is uh, unbelievable. This is, what every, this is what we've been waiting for. This is like Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, all put together, Madison Square Garden. We're here. Oh, looking forward to it. we got a lot to do, and for a change, we spend more time on the field than maybe the golf course because lots of times you and I chat, we always have conversations about the course, Shinnecock Hills in the summer, obviously British Open, but let's spend a second or two on Augusta, the, the layout itself, to give the serious golf fan who listen to this a, a little sense of of what to expect. Are there any changes? Uh, is it rained a little bit? Are the greens soft? Uh, it, did they put uh, the pin placements? Give me a little something on a golf course that we need to know about getting ready for the four days, Frank. Let's go there. Uh, you, uh, I love it. You always want the skinny. Well, first of all, which you probably wouldn't have found out till tomorrow, there's two greens that have been changed, 10 and 12. Just tweaked a little bit. 10 is a little bit more severe in the front. And 12, I think they're trying to give them just a little more space. You're only talking a yard or so. That green's been completely resurfaced. You'd never even notice it. They're the only two things that really the players are talking about. Um, it, it, it's it's literally perfect. You know, it has that emerald green. I, I don't know how they get this green color. Um, they don't paint it. It's it, it, I don't even know where they grow this grass, but it is magnificent. And, and everything's exactly as it should be. Uh, it, it, you know, I could... Quote any hole, and you'd know. If I said 12, you know it's a little par three across the water, the middle of the main corner. If I say 11 or 13 or 15, this is the one golf course the viewer just knows. They know the shots. They remember them. And I think that's the beauty of the Masters for a start. And the wrinkle, uh, there was meant to be rain today in a storm. It hasn't really hit. It sort of stayed away. Uh, there's talk that you might get 20 to 30 mile, mile an hour winds on Saturday. So you have all those wrinkles plus a golf course that's that is just exactly how they want it to, and they will they will put the flags. The reason why I attended the flags last is they'll put those hole locations, flag positions. They'll put them in the right place depending on how strong that wind's going to be in the weekend. All right, two, eight, thirteen, uh, and fifteen. Which hole is a no no if you don't give you a chance for a birdie? The par fives. No, they all do. The, the, the four easiest holes on the golf course are those four par fives. Two is the dog leg left. Actually, Jack Nicholas always used to say, you know, you've got to be careful on that one. He said, if you drove it left, there's a little creek that runs, well, a little, almost like a drain that runs down the left side. He said, there used to be a Delta check in counter there because if you drove it there, you might as well book a ticket home. <laughs> um, eight will test the guys out. It's been lengthened over, you know, but not for, not for a while now. That's, the long hitters always have an advantage at eight because it's straight back up the hill towards the clubhouse. Most people don't realize how hilly Augusta is. And then, of course, 13 and 15 are the most famous, especially on Sunday because it's how much do you want to buy it off. Um, the Bubba Watsons and the, and the Phil Nicholsons, lefties who, who like to cut it around the corner, it's a little bit easier. 13 is a bit safer for them. But that second shot, you know, Ray's Creek, just you know, it just meanders in front of that green. And, and it's an evil green, the slope of it. And 15, uh, you know, that was the defining shot last year for Sergio Garcia. His eight iron second, he had a big drive. He had eight iron from about 200 yards, and it hit the flag stick. Nate Eagle was back in it. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're there, as everybody knows. The Eagles, the birdies, the sixes, the sevens, all of the above. All right, the par threes on the front. Uh, I'm trying to think what it was. It uh, four and six? Is that what it is? I, I'm pretty sure. Is that right? Yep. Four and six. Yeah, four. For, and then, of course, um, uh, 12 and 16, which one is the hardest one where if you're a golfer of known ilk, you want to get out of there with a par and go home, get to the next hole? Which one? Well, I think the most under-talked about uh, hole on the whole golf course is the fourth hole. Um, it does have a multitude of tee locations, so they can shorten it up, but that's probably the hardest straight-up par three without any water or anything on it. Um, so that causes the most concern for guys trying to get off a good start. You have a tough opening hole in the first, chance at the second, a par five, chance at the short third, which some people try and drive every now and again. And then the fourth hits you smack bang in the teeth. So it's very easy if you just get off to a, like an average start to bogey four and be over the par. But that never gets any love. Six is sort of the same. No water in play, but a hellacious green. The famous ones, uh, Nicholas said it's the hardest hole in golf, really, 12, because it's just an absolute scorecard record at 150 yards. Well, you got to be very you know, precise. You, 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 there's very yeah. more, There's no margin for error on number 12. That's the problem. 
Well, it killed Jordan Spieth twice. The Bubba Watson year was at uh, four years ago now, and of course two years ago with Danny Willett. Um, you know, when he had that 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 four shot, five shot lead with nine holes to play. Um, right. Right. Yeah, it just comes at the perfect time. And also, remember, they don't see water really until the 11. So, and that's also the beauty of this golf course. When they reverse the nines, you know, they get you out there with all the undulations and some quick greens and that. And you think, okay, I've got the course, you know, I've got it under control. And then you look at the 11th and you see the pond in front and Race Creek behind. And, and then you got water at 12 and you got it water at 13. You get a little reprieve at 14. Then you get it at 15 and 16 again. And, and that's why that, that, that really does sort out the brave from the uh, from the also rounds. Very good with Mr. Nobolo. Uh, let's do Tiger. Um, uh, here's what I said about 15 minutes ago, and you edify if you wish or change. Uh, I think what I have seen in the four tournaments, uh, providing back stays healthy, and I know that's a huge if, what I have seen mm. is the idea that I do think he's got another major in him. Uh, I think that... Um, you know, if he stays healthy, he's 42, he's got probably five good years left if he manages the schedule properly and keeps flexible and all that. I could see him winning another major. The problem is I don't see him winning this one. Uh, there's too many good players right now. He hasn't won in a long time. Uh, you know, on the tour, I think he needs to win a tour event first. It's hard for me to think that his first tour event in 10 years or whatever, his five years is going to be the Masters. So I think he'd be on the leaderboard. But I don't know if I have the goods back nine on Sunday. But I do think he's, re- I think he's returned, and I think he'll win a major again, not just this one. How about that? Yeah, I think you're being very fair there. You, the, he is a sentimental favorite this week. And I think that when you look at the Vegas odds and all that, it's a bit like the Patriots last year against the Eagles. They probably should have been even money, but you know the, the, the love affair, obviously, with the Patriots and how good they've been, that's why they got the edge. So with Augusta, the fact that Woods has won here four times, 14 major championships, people so desperately want him back. He really is a sentimental favourite, but I think you're on the money there. If he was to win this week, you know, I, I'm going to get, I'm not going out in a limb. I think it's the greatest comeback in sport. I, I really, I, I, I've, I've dug through the record books. I can't find a sport. You know, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, Agassi coming back, Tommy John surgery. You know, you try and go through what is a legitimate comeback. He was done. So um, the one advantage here is. Is love affair with the golf course. Um, I know this. I just detailed two new greens as in ten and tw- ten and twelve. But he just he has such good history here. He does actually play by memory. Um, he's talked a lot about that, reading putts and that. So he's a situational player too. He knows what to do on on various holes. It's just whether or not he, he can come to grips with with his body having the shots. I mean, it's still relatively new, but he has the power back. He is every bit as long as Dustin Johnson now. So he's actually not giving up any firepower, and and that's what makes it intriguing. You know that it's wide open this year, Chris, but there's still only 87 players in the field, and out of that you can take 20 or 30 away in. So it's still actually a very small window of of, of players that can legitimately win. And he is legit. He got a chance. Uh, is Mac- yeah. is McElroy Frank? Is he spooked by like Bjorn Borg at the U.S. Open, like Sam Snead at the U.S. <laughs> Open? Is McElroy? Now he can say that he wants, but until he wins it, I'm going to go back and think about that forty in the back nine. Is Mac- and he really hasn't played great at the event since. Is McElroy a little spooked by Augusta? Yeah, a little bit, but um, and, and you know it might haunt him forever and a day. But remember, he was majorless when, when he came back and when he shot eighty that day. He'd yet to win a major championship. Um, and then, of course, the U.S. Open, which was two months later, he won his first major. And then he quickly got to he got to four. So he is a different player then. He was just expected to do what Tiger Woods did, and that was win the Masters early and win it frequent. There's no question that is the mental block. This is the fourth year, though, that he's gone for the Grand Slam. Um, you know, this year's unique. We have uh, Rory going for the Grand Slam here. We're going to have Phil going for the Grand Slam of all places, obviously, in New York, Beth Page. And then Jordan at the PGA Championship in Bell Reeves. So it, it's, that's unique in itself. But I think Rory, in some respects, gets a reprieve because everybody is talking about someone else that's not named Rory McIlroy, whether it's a Wood, whether it's a Dustin Johnson, whether it's Justin Thomas with a chance to get to world number one. You would think that would be the biggest story. It's far from it. So that actually helps his cause. Excellent point. Mickelson, uh, obviously got a big win a couple of weeks ago, played very well, uh, beat uh, Thomas to do it. Uh, he loves the course one of three times. Give me Phil's chances. Is it, would it be? Uh, would you be really surprised if he won, or is he a legitimate title contender back nine on Sunday? 
Yeah, he's a, he's a contender. Um, I'd put him probably in the second or third phase of, of people that are legit. Uh, the biggest story really uh, vis-a-vis uh, Mickelson was the fact that he and Woods played a practice round yesterday. Fine, no, fun, um, fun, they, fun. Yeah, they would never do that. I mean, that's how they've both changed. They've become the Nicholas and Palmer. You know, Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer are adversaries. They weren't friends early on in their careers. But then finally they realized, you know, as, as we all do when we grow up, that, hey, without the other, they wouldn't be as successful or, or as famous as what they were. And Mickelson and Woods, they talked about that through the Ryder Cups and President's Cups of the last last uh, two to three years. They've become friends. They realize that golf is a common denominator. I think that's, that's helped, Phil, because that exposure, like on Tuesday, he's comfortable in that role. But, but still, I think you have to yield to the younger players before Phil. It would have to be a little bit like Nicholas in 86. All right, wow. So, Phil, although 1-1, one, one, you're not necessarily so sure. All right, how about a guy like... I don't know. How about Justin Rose? I mean, everybody seems to think he's due. Last year, lost in the playoff. We all know how good he is. Um, I mean, he, I, would he be your favorite? He loves the golf course. He's won a major. Give me a little rundown on Justin Rose for a sec. Yeah, he's not my favorite, but I mean, you, you're splitting hairs when you're trying to really pick a favorite. You know, I, I think once you go past the, the romantic views of Mickelson and Woods and and some of the other players, you, you do. You, you get to who you really should be focusing on, and, and Justin Rose is one of those guys. He's at the prime of his career, been runner-up you know, twice in the last three years. Um, here's the game for this. For some reason, this is the golf course that he's actually played the best at, even though he hasn't won. Um, you would think his ball striking would be better suited for a U.S. Open. I know he's won, but on a regular basis, he's never missed a cut here. He's been remarkably consistent, led a number of times after the first or 36 holes. So for him, he's extremely comfortable. He has to be part of the conversation this week. All right, who is your favorite, Frank? Um, I, I got two guys, really. You know, we've already mentioned Rory. I've never seen an event, Chris, you and I have talked a lot over the years, where the world number one never gets talked about. He's a, Dustin Johnson is that guy. Um, last year, he was a prohibitive favorite until he slipped walking up, you know, walking down the stairs as an apartment. And that actually was was about, what are we, just short of 4 o'clock. It was about an hour after you know, last year. At this time, nobody was going to beat him. An hour later, he pulls out. Um, I, I just think his game is strong. Uh, he's the best driver of the ball in the game right now. Uh, he's won at every level. Uh, he won at Oakmont. The, those greens are every bit, as, every bit as quick as what they are here. And I think he feels snubbed. I really do. And I think that's good. When you're that good and you feel like you're getting dished, uh, I, th- I, th- I don't think you can get better motivation. He was asked the which question yesterday. That came up 78 times to players in the media center. I kind of like the fact that he answered in disdain. It's like, I got my own things to worry about. Wow. And, and I really, I think he's coming here with, um, he's like the guy that doesn't want to lose his title. He's, he, he, there's three guys that could pass him. Jordan Spieth has an outside chance. Uh, John Rahm and, and Justin Thomas, if he wins, can pass. Dustin Johnson. He's aware of that. And and I think we're going to see a very, very good Dustin Johnson. And he really is my favorite. Oh, wow. All right. Give me a year. It's slim, it's slim pickings. Slim but pickings. Give me a year. Forget Justin Rose. Don't go with McElroy or Rose. Give me a, a Leishman. Give, give me a European that you love in this tournament this week who's going to play well. Paul Casey's back in the equation again. One of Velspar beat Tiger Woods of all people. That's where Tiger ran second. Um He's played extremely well here. He said yes to the the European Ryder Cup in the past. He's blanked that and said didn't want to be a part of it. Um, that win there, he, he's toured long and hard. Uh, plays well on hard golf courses. Uh, he, he could surprise a few people because the only thing missing from his resume is a major championship. And, and he's in a rich frame of, you know, really rich vein of form. So you give Casey an opportunity. Yep. Right, would you rather play with the players? I, I, they would rather play first thing Thursday morning than late Friday afternoon, correct, Frank? Um, you're going to get a both because of the, the size of the field. It just depends on the wind. You know, like right now where I am, I'm just outside. It's blowing about 15 to 20 miles an hour. You know, you just want the day really where in the afternoon you don't get much breeze. Because come Saturday, it's all going to sort out. If that forecast is correct, then Saturday will Saturday be really tough. You'd be able to chew through the leaderboard. Either that'll just be a hanging on game. But um, yeah, like Woods, for example, goes off. He gets the equivalent of an early late start, and, and it's just a flick of the dice. I mean, that actually might even determine who wins this year. You know, if, if we do get 
Thursday or Friday being windy or one day and you get caught, that's going to be worth a couple. That could be worth a couple of shots. And we have to get Bubba Watson in the mix. He loves the event. He's had a big year. And he, you know, one thing about Bubba Watson, he has a tendency to win the same course year after year after year. He wins Hartford, he wins LA, and he wins here. So we got to get Bubba an opportunity, right? Oh, yeah, two wins. You know, win a Riviera, which is a great golf course, uh, you know, in LA, and then to win the match play. And he had a tough draw. Uh, so, you know, you're beating one person after the other. And, and you know, he whacks Kisner in the final, too. He's, yeah, he's played good. That's what that, that's what makes this Masters so compelling. I cannot remember the last time we've had so many, not good players, but great players in fine form. You know, Rory a couple of weeks ago, Bobby, you mentioned. You know, even Dustin, like I said, might have been a little off the ball, but he's very happy with his game. Justin Thomas has done nothing but great things over the last 18 to, months to two years. Jordan Spieth hit the ball the best he has in his career last week in Houston. It's just the putter that has to warm up. You, know, you throw in Woods and Mickelson. We're not even talking about Stenson and Rose and all those other guys that, that are capable. So you, you have 10 to 15 guys that are capable of blowing, my expression, blowing the doors off the tournament. We watch you and, all. And that is, that is unusual. Yeah, very unusual. I can't wait. Watching your weekend, Frank, uh, both on both outlets, Golf Channel and CBS. Keep up the good work. Always a pleasure. Appreciate you coming on today. Cheers, my friend. All right, Mr. Noblo, we continue here on Mad Dog Unleashed. We're back after this.